Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trail Talk. We are so glad you could join us today. I'm Edie, and we are live here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And I have two great guests with me today. This is Chris Ginn and Rudy Fries, and they are here uh, representing Kiwanis. And I know you guys are familiar with Kiwanis Club. If you live anywhere around Duncan, you know about Kiwanis right. Club Kitty Land. I mean, like the staple, the <laughs> staple of summers in Duncan, right? That's if right. you have kids or grandkids or whatever. Um, but before we get to Kitty Land, um, I want the viewers to get to know you guys just a little bit. And um, so, Rudy, we'll start with you. You are currently serving as president of the local Kiwanis Club. That's correct. Okay, so um, how long have you been a what do you call yourselves? Kiwanians? Kiwanians. Oh, yeah. nailed it. All right. Good job. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been a Kiwanian? I've been a Kiwanian almost uh, 10 years. Um, we moved to Duncan in 2020, and uh, I was a, a president of the Kiwanian Club in uh, Jinx, Oklahoma. And uh, so when we got to town, uh, I got plugged into Kiwanis here, and, and just it's just a bit. Good, excellent. And and so what brought you to Duncan? So I'm actually a pastor, okay. uh, served the First United Methodist Church here in town, and uh, we get appointed, and so I was told to come to Duncan. Right, okay. And this is a side note. About how long do you stay in a community? It, as a it just varies? It does vary, yeah. So we're going on two years, uh, hoping for 18 more. Okay. Have bags, we'll travel. Have bags, we'll travel. Just whatever. <laughs> wherever they send you. Wherever they send you. That's, right. well, that, that's awesome. We're that's hoping cool. he, we're able to keep him for quite a long a time. Yes. A while. Yes. Also, yeah. Chris, what about you? How long have you been a So I've been uh, a member for about the same amount of time, about 10 years. Um, I came on board. I had just finished up a leadership dunking class. Okay. And that was really impressed upon us to get involved in the community right. um, and find a project that you could have near and dear to your heart. And so um, I have a neighbor, I call him my neighbor. Uh, I'm over at Advanced Medical Supplies, one of my departments, mm -hmm. uh, where we're, we're, we're Duncan Regional Hospital, and uh, was over at Advanced Medical Supply. And uh, Pastor uh, Robert Teague has the church next door. Right. And he came over and he said, Hey, um, have you ever thought about Kiwanis and, and joining our club? And I thought, okay, what, what do you guys do in the first place? And right. he said, you know, Kitty Land. Okay, well, then the rest was history. Enough for said. Yeah, 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 for sure. So. Okay, so uh, so then you you said you've been in, we spoke for a few minutes before <laughs> the camera started rolling. You said you've been around Duncan, there at Van Duncan for about 20 years. So about how long is that? Did you say how long you've been in Kiwanis here? 10. In about 10 years. Okay. Um, so why Kiwanis? What is it? You, tell, tell the viewers um, just some things about the Kiwanis Club. It, sure. It's an international organization, right? Yes. And um, so my goodness, I I looked it up. You guys should look up their web page. It's really pretty nice and very easy to find things, but um, for it to be so like international and for such a long time, the structure of the organization has to be like really sound, I think, you know, and, and they just have really yeah. found those things that um, make people want to be involved. I think it was something like thousands helping millions or something mm -hmm. was a phrase that I saw in there. And I was very, I it really piqued my interest whenever I was reading through that. So um, just talk about the Kiwanis Club International or even some of the, the little branches that you might know about. Sure. So we are part of the international group. Um, specifically for us locally, it is, well, internationally as well as locally, it's about the kids in, in our community. We're here to serve. Our, our motto is serving the kids uh, mm -hmm. of, of your community. Mm -hmm. And um, so that kind of tug at my heart uh, when I realized that um, it's not just kitty land. Um, that's a, a, a great place that families can come together for a reasonable price and have a great time. The kids are excited. 
Uh, the parents are excited. The grandparents are excited to come oh, too. Right. They remember when they came and they rode the rides. And it's just a unique experience, but it, you know, it doesn't stop there. Uh, what's more important? Uh, we have the, the swim lessons. So um, we just wrapped up our last sign up for swim lessons uh, last Saturday. And Altogether, we've signed up over 300 kids wow. for swim lessons. We're right across from Kitty Land, uh -huh, there uh -huh. at, the, at the big pool. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, for $15 a child, wow. you get two weeks of swim lessons. And we do it twice in the summertime. Uh -huh. So two weeks in June, two weeks in July, $15 a child or 30 bucks per family. So I had some families that came in when we were there at the mall signing up on Saturday, three kids, four kids. We had one family had five kids, 30 bucks. Mm, wow. And, and the deal is this is a real program that they keep coming back year after year. Mm -hmm. And um, they learn life saving skills. They learn how to properly be in the water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it wasn't for this program, you know, I, you know, we don't know. Right. Well, it's go. kind of interesting. Um, when we teach about the Chisholm Trail here, one of the things that I like to point out to a group of school age kids is that the cowboys who went on these cattle drives weren't all that much older than you, but they didn't know how to swim. And the kids are like, what? And I, <laughs> I say, yeah, swimming lessons are kind of a newer idea yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as far as, you know, everybody learning to swim. And it's just that it's such a way of life, you know, that people learn how to swim now and, and just thinking about a time when they, that was not important or wasn't a priority for people, you know, I mean, just, I'm just, I'm just pointing out how grateful our community is to the Kiwanians for uh, providing such a reasonably priced, like you said, life-saving skill. Mm -hmm. For the children and they just keep coming back here after yeah year, so that's wow 300 kids that's yeah. that's significant huge. Yeah. yeah wow what about you rudy so i have a couple of things uh each club is a little different so what drew me to kiwanis in the first place was just their involvement with the children and so coming from jinx we uh we had uh, bicycle workshops where we teach bike safety and check their chains and make sure everything was tight and make sure they had helmets and things like that. And so that's what drew me to Kiwanis was just that giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got to Duncan and uh, got engaged and saw uh, the things that we did, it was just uh, just a, almost another level. Uh, Kitty Land is uh, just a spectacular place. And uh, probably one of the things that <clears throat> gets me about Kitty Land I talk about a lot is the idea that, you know, it, it's so reasonably priced that it doesn't matter where you fall, you can come ride a few rides, laugh, spin mm -hmm. on the tilt a whirl, ride right. the train, and uh, have an experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, it touched home for me last summer. Uh, I was working the train, and uh, a family, whole family, came in on open night, and they all wanted to ride the train together, get a picture on the train. And so I talked to the the seemed like the grandmother of the group, and uh, her mother had just passed away, and the whole family was in town for the funeral. And that was a staple for that family. Mm -hmm. When they would come to Granny's, mm -hmm. they would come go to Kitty Land. And so they were there celebrating her life. And it just, just that it had that touch on someone's right. family like that was just powerful. It's beautiful. It, actually, I'm going to interject. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of beautiful that it's a generational, because it's been in Duncan for so long, it is a generational yeah. activity. And everyone in town knows what Kitty Land is and where Kitty Land is. And so I love that story. What a great story. Well, you said um, why, and, and he's touched on it. And I also want to say uh, on the swim side of it, um, what touched my heart and pulled me was, was in the pool with the kids year after year after year. This one particular year, I got the young kids, the, the little ones that with their parents. When they're three to five, they get in the water with us with, with a parent. Mm -hmm. And this one young boy, um, I think he's four years old in the pool with his dad the whole two weeks. And I mean, he just made progress doing real well. We were giving each other high fives and he was having a blast with it. Well, one Sunday after church, my family was eating out at a local restaurant 
And the little boy came in and he actually beat his mom and dad through the door and he spotted me. He ran right up, jumped to my lap, gave me a big <laughs> hug and said, Coach Ginn, Coach Ginn, I'm so glad to see you. And, and that touched my heart, but it was also funny in the fact that his mom was the first one to come through the door uh -huh. who had never met me before <laughs> and was freaking out. Her eyes were this big around. And luckily the dad was there too. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay. He's a swim coach. So it's just, it's, it's things like that. Or uh, we have a, a, another young man that um, he, he had a lot of health issues uh, as a child. And um, one of his favorite things to do was come visit his grandma in Duncan. And he loved the train. So if you ever come down, and and see the train depot it's renamed after him there's a bench in his honor he has passed uh -huh. um but one of his last wishes was i just want to ride the train so he got to do that it's one of his last wishes and um the family wanted to have that see we would dedicate the right. depot to him to, uh, which we did so there's so much good that comes that out is, of this i mean that whole of course, being from a small town allows you to be able to do some of those things too and run into, you know, have these run ins with people that you meet at the uh, lessons or whatever. But what are, those are great stories. Did you have another? Well, I was just going to say some of our uh, other less known things. Uh, we work with the kids in the school and we have several programs. Uh, elementary kids, we do uh, what's called junior police. And so oh, yeah. they yeah. sign up to be a junior police in their school and uh, not like a rescue police, but, right. uh, but oh, they, my kids were junior police. Were, okay. Yeah. 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 So, drive to school early with their little <laughs> yep. vests and sashes. Keeping and everybody hats. safe as they Stop cross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then as they uh, get older into high school, uh, we have what's called the Key Club. And, uh, and really, what Key Club is designed to do is to teach uh, young adults how to run business meetings and and take responsibility and engage in the community they have service hours they have to get and and, uh, and so it, it's just this this structure that allows them to step into roles that they maybe wouldn't until they were out of high school or even out of college right. and, and so it prepares them for the future to be a leader mm -hmm. in the community and mm -hmm. give back to the community so those are those are powerful programs too that uh, sometimes we because we get so focused on kitty land we, we you know but we do have those. And so it's just, it's our investment into the future, mm -hmm. uh, future leaders in, in our community. And right. it's just invaluable. So, and, and student of the month. Yeah, we, oh, and yeah. we recognize uh, student of the month, uh, usually a, a male and a female uh, from the school and the, they come out to our meetings. And so they get to come to the twice a month, big, big meeting with the Kiwanis and we recognize them, give them a plaque and award and, and get to, read out their accomplishments and stuff. And so right. uh, that's cool. Yeah, we just engaging with the kids like that is is uh, beneficial for them and the community down the road. Right, and I think I've noticed that um, it's not just Duncan. You guys have, do you have student of the month from any of the surrounding communities? No, just, no? just Duncan, it's Duncan. Oh, okay, it's yeah. just The Duncan. scholarships that we do can okay. expand. Okay, maybe, that, Duncan, maybe that's what especially I Especially if saw. it's a, a club member um, whose student is graduating, we we do the scholarships. So, so like the uh, like Empire, did, would they have their own Kiwanis Club, or would they be able to um, like qualify for a scholarship from the Duncan Kiwanis Club? It, it's all centered around Duncan. It's the Duncan Kiwanis Club, and then we do reach out. We have member. It's it's typically through the membership. Oh, okay. We, I'm from I'm from Marlow. Okay. I'm yeah. working to you know, right. I, right. I feel like it's all the same. We're all connected right. anyways. Sure, but, yeah. but yeah, um uh we we have people from Marlow that's that's uh that graduating. Are, members, that, uh, are they met, so does Marlow have a Kiwanis club? No. No, okay. No. So people from Marlow can join. Can join. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And if one of the schools uh wanted to start a key club or a junior police, they would reach out to the closest Kiwanis club, which would be us. Mm -hmm. And uh we could have that conversation and see about starting that program in, in their school. If we could support that and, and engage in that. Right, right. So um 
I have a thousand things flying through my head right now. Um, okay, I'm gonna focus here for a second. All right, so um, Key Club, I really think that I was in Key Club when I was in high school. I, I mean, a long time ago, but um, a bit, I can, because I can remember having to have some service hours and uh, like mm -hmm. raise, we raised mm -hmm. money for some things. I mean, I'm, I put together a bike a thon or something, something where sure. we rode bikes a long ways or so. Anyway, um, but then in college, there was a Circle K club, I believe, that was an ex a Kiwanis club for college students. It is. I'm not real familiar with that program. Uh, when we were in Jinx, we had uh, had some kids that when they came out of high school would join that at the co collegiate level. At the, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We really focus on the, the high school. Age, getting, sure. getting them ready, mm -hmm. letting them have their own meetings, set their own meetings. They actually have their own president, vice president, secretary, and we're there just to kind of help guide them along the process mm -hmm. so that, you know, as they become young adults and they want to help out in the community and they want to join a board, you know, they'll, they'll know the ins and outs of that. And, and also they help us um, they'll come out and do service hours for the Christmas tree sales. Oh, okay. They're all out there okay, pitching in right. and learning to be good leaders. Right. And so when you say uh, like organization running a meeting, is that like Robert's rules mm -hmm. of order and that sort of mm -hmm. thing? Those are good things. Yes, yes they to are. Learn. <laughs> That's important stuff. Yes. That's really great. I I think I, I am loving... Uh, kind of the di diverse way Kiwanis um, pours into the lives of kids in a community. You know, I mean, from teaching them how to run a meeting to life saving, literally they can save their own lives by learning how to swim to spending time with their family at Kitty Land to, you know, learning how to uh, have responsibilities in elementary school at junior police. I mean, they're mm -hmm. just a, a whole you guys do a lot of have a lot of ways of investing in the lives of kids yeah also on our end uh, it's why why kiwanis mm -hmm. uh, is we're hands-on mm -hmm. uh, we're we're there with the kids we're engaging with them we don't just you know we don't just throw a little money at them and, and things like that we you know, they're they're in swim lessons they're they're in the park they're the key clubs helping us with trees and you know, the junior police come to our meetings as well and uh, get to stand up as an elementary student in front of all these adults and introduce themselves right. uh, and say what school they're from. And so it's, it's the hands-on. Mm -hmm. We see that impact uh, firsthand and, and that's powerful. Powerful for them as much for us. Right. Oh, absolutely. Um, so uh, how do you get the money to support all of these programs that you do? There's a few ways. Um, a lot of the programs kind of support themselves. Um, swim lessons, the, the little bit that we do get that uh, keeps the, the vest, the new vest that we need or anything that we need for uh, the pool. Um, Kitty Land is pretty much the, the big one. Uh, the funds that we've raised, you, know, you pay 50 cents a ticket and ride the train for two tickets or the tilt the world for two or the rest of two rides for one, all that money funnels right back into basically two things. It's there to keep that park going. It's mm -hmm. been going since 1955. Right. There's a lot of maintenance that goes in to right. keeping that thing going. So that money goes back into that as well as we usually try to provide eight or nine senior scholarships uh, to the local seniors that are graduating and going off to college, we do $1,000 uh, for each kid for their first first year of college. Right. So Christmas trees help out with that too. That's mm -hmm. part of the money that we get for giving back to those two things. Mm -hmm. So just out of my um, curiosity, have you found that moving the, the Christmas tree sales to Kitty Land, is that a better location than Weren't you guys at that parking lot? I, I bet it was before. It was before Rudy yes, yeah. here. yes. Um, it it's all in the experience, and I'm gonna let Rudy touch on <laughs> where it's going next because it's get it's gonna even get better. We are, oh, um, it is. but it, but it is better. I will say before he jumps in there, I, I will say that from a 
open parking lot to that feel in the park mm -hmm. and Rudy and his wife added a new feature um, photo op, so photo op, op. Mm -hmm. oh, which is fun. really cool and then tell them what we're doing next so uh, this year is going to be great we are planning to do kind of a uh, polar express theme this year and the idea oh. is hot chocolate and a train ride and photo op and up your tree and so oh my um, goodness we've been, this sounds amazing <laughs> yeah. we've been planning it and uh, talking about it and dreaming about it and uh this year it's gonna it's gonna come to fruition this year we're gonna that give it a so test cool. sample for a couple weekends uh and see how it goes and uh, see if it takes off as its own own thing well uh, listen let me tell you uh Last year, I was doing a little ways to celebrate Christmas thing in Oklahoma, and there are some big time Polar Express things like this, and every single thing I read was like book early, dates fill up, you know, and so I'm going to guess something local like that. Uh, with the train everyone loves, yeah. I mean, I'm guessing it's going to be the Kitty Lane train. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, all of that. Wow. How cool. Our I hope, love that idea so much. Our hope is to uh, the train, take the train ride, and at some point the train will stop in front of a, uh, someone sitting in a rocket chair and read a story, Christmas story, uh, and then drive the train back up and off you go. Mm -hmm. uh, hot chocolate cookies cookies so we're we're excited we think this is going to be uh, something oh, special yeah. this year and uh, we we can't wait oh my goodness i am that just gets me super excited i don't even have any little kids i'm gonna have to go find some little kids to come by yourself, by yourself. Yeah. yeah oh well and, and you say, <laughs> okay if you <laughs> and you say why, why Qantas? And, and this is a perfect example um we need more people joining the club we need fresh eyes. Um, there's nothing wrong with us people that have been there a long time and we're holding down the forward and just keep plugging forward. But thank goodness to we we do have some some newer members that are coming mm -hmm. into the club and they've got fresh ideas and it's just helping us. That's move exactly forward. what I was thinking when he, you were he was saying that. I thought Rudy came to town and he saw something that everyone else just saw as the Kitty Land train that we put away for the winter. Right. I can't take credit for that. Well, still, I mean, it, I, here's, here's what I get credit for. If you go to the train this summer, there's a black light in the tunnel. Oh, nice. So, nice touch. But the, I wish I had the, uh, the Polar Express thought, but someone came up with it. Well, and still, we I entertained mean, it. It's just it's new people. And you just go. And, with and, it. and it's not just one person. I would just have. Just everybody. And, and we're starting to grow and, and, we're, and everybody's getting involved and it's mm -hmm. and there's the excitement is building and we want more people to join the club. So the club membership has has grown? It's starting to. That's it's, great. It's starting to. We need we need more. Uh, we're, uh, when we say we're growing as a club, we have to include friends of Kitty Land, which is something we started. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness, right before COVID, we start, we were like, gosh, what do we need to do to get people? more involved because sometimes they don't want to become a member. They don't want to pay dues. They don't want to come to the lunches that we have, which we do twice a month on Tuesdays, uh, but they want to get involved. And especially the younger ones, uh, the younger families, a young mom and dad, uh, when they hear, what do I got to do to be involved? Well, you can become a friend of Kitty Land, get a friend of Kitty Land t-shirt. You come work the park for a night your family comes and gets to be in the park for free for a night. Mm. So we're that's starting to grow and, and genius. And, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. a really great idea too. So. No, I mean, I wanted to, I really thought after I went to Leadership Duncan, I really thought about joining Kiwanis too. I think I probably even talked to you, um, but I can't make it to meetings. Yeah. I mean, my job here, I have either mm -hmm. a, a, I mean, there's usually kids here. My, I have a very limited lunch, you know, yes. when they're here. And so I just couldn't commit to attending meetings. So there's ways so around there's it. there's ways yes. around it. Oh, I love it. I love thinking outside the box. That's fantastic. So are there dues that people like that you pay? Quarterly. To, uh, quarterly dues. Yeah, which covers for us to be part of the international. Okay, um, and, but so and all, not, all the dues go to international, or do you guys get to keep some of it? So some of it is, so we have a total separate account that's for international, 
and dues go into that account and it, get, it pays for the actual dues themselves and then it pays for the lunches and the meeting room mm, okay yeah that we provide yeah and it's the second mm -hmm. and fourth am i right second and fourth yep. tuesday at noon at simmons center, at the simmons center. Mm -hmm. okay but like we say you yeah know, I, I have to miss some of the meetings and, right um, that's okay right it's all about helping the kids um so um you you uh obviously you're under the international organization but i guess each individual organization has a lot of auto autonomy mm -hmm. that you are able to kind of do your own programs make it fit with your in your community are there any like guidelines or anything that you are required to do besides pay in some of the dues to be a part of that international program they they do they want to they and we're meeting those needs above and beyond but they want to see some fundraising they want to see that that is going back out in some way to support the kids mm -hmm. in the community. So there's like reporting that you do back mm -hmm. to the international. See, I, I mean, there has to be that kind of structure for this for this organization to be, I, I think, to be successful for so many years on an international, uh, you know, uh, basis or whatever the word is. But anyway, but I mean, that's what I'm just I'm thinking of how how does all of that work? So does international um, do anything special to support a local group? Like, no. do they do they turn around and do something back for, for the local group? Um, they offer throughout the year various programs that we can participate in and things of that nature. Um, you know, we have a, we have a, Kind of a regional structure too. Texas, Oklahoma. We're part of the Texas, Oklahoma district, and so we have a, a lieutenant governor that makes the rounds, comes to our business meetings uh, at least once a year, sometimes twice, depending on their schedule and ours. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, they're very interested. And uh, as as uh, officers of the club, we have some requirements. We have to attend some of the, some of the district meetings as well. Um, luckily, it's been Zoom, so it's much easier to do that right? kind of thing. That's so, always the silver cloud, yeah. and the silver lining to me of COVID. <laughs> right. We have people have really found other ways to meet and take mm -hmm. care of business. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's there's some uh, involvement that that takes place. Mm -hmm. Programs that come, become available to us. And, um, you know, I, in fact, I was just at uh, the uh, Duncan High School uh, awards banquet right. and presenting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a district award that we that, that we give out, and, and uh, one of one of our students received that award and a scholarship for uh, for uh, going above and beyond uh, type deal. So right. um, yeah, they 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 invest. In, we we invest in them. They invest in us. Mm. Okay, so I I mean I I just feel like. This this organization really has to work together a lot. Do do Kiwanis clubs from other communities like ever join forces? That happens to, to do something bigger, you know, than you could do by yourself. Some special program or something. We, the last one we did was a couple of years ago, which it was nationally that we got involved, which was bringing a program to the local schools. Um, it was um, after school activity for, for kids that needed it. Oh, okay. um, we're just usually so busy with what we've locally got right. going on that, right. and, 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 and Qantas wants you to do that. They want you to really invest your time, energy, and money in, into your local community. And if they take a look at you and that's happening, then, you know. Mm -hmm. And just like yeah. thumbs up, keep going, guys. <laughs> keep yeah. going. Yeah. We're proud of what you're doing. Do you, are there like conventions and things like that where you know people go to share ideas or you know that sort of thing? They're they're uh it, it's really Texas, uh, Oklahoma mm -hmm. okay. where yeah. we do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and they do have one. I don't know if it's annually or there's it's, an annual, yeah. There's an annual um and uh, sometimes uh, that's even for key club. Oh, so okay. um, key club uh, key clubs can participate in that, and it's kind of a year-long project. Uh, 
they go and compete against other schools and uh, whew, it's pretty detailed. Um, I know that they keep a, uh, they create a portfolio and yeah. uh, the projects, the service projects they've done, the number of hours their club has done and they compete against other schools and, and they go to, uh, to conference and, and show up, compete and take a place or, or whatever mm -hmm. that looks like. Oh, very so, nice. So, so yeah. at the high school, um, is, is, does there have to be a, a, a school, like a teacher mm -hmm. sponsor yeah, in we, order for them to have mm -hmm. a club? Yeah. Okay. And, and we currently have, have a husband and wife team uh, at the school that, that's running our key club right now. Very nice. And so do those, does, does that teacher have to be a Kiwanian? No. To do, no? No. Okay. no. Just the key club sponsor for the school. Okay. Very nice. Can be. Can yeah, we love, right, we right, love right, it. Yeah, or a friend of Kitty Land, yeah, yeah. we'll take that too. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, uh, I'm just I'm just kind of thinking about all this information that someone who's watching, they may not have any idea. You know how mm -hmm. how does this? What does this look like in a community? I see Kitty Land going. I see Christmas trees for sale. But I mean, how does this really work? Um, and so when you meet. I'm guessing it's a, roughly an hour, mm -hmm. a time for people to just go on their normal lunch break. And so what does a meeting look like? So uh, we we have a pretty structured meeting uh, because you've got a little bit of business to take care of as well to get through. And so uh, <clears throat> we always uh, open with, uh, with a uh, prayer and then flag salute. Uh, we welcome any guests that are visiting with us. Oftentimes we have visitors. If you'd like to visit, you can just come over on the second or fourth Tuesday at noon to, have you. to the Simmons Center, Red, Red Bed Courtyard, and, and a, a meal. We'll provide the meal. Just come see us. Uh, so we introduce any visitors or guests we have. Uh, we recognize our students of the month in, in those meetings, uh, our junior police. Uh, we usually, one of the one of the, the first or the second Tuesday of the month is our, uh, just uh, we call it a club meeting, where we, uh, we have a guest speaker. Oh, okay. And so we usually have someone come in and speak uh, and talk to us about uh, development. We've had uh, um, Dr. Deegan. Mm -hmm. uh, we've we've had uh, quite a few community leaders that come in and, and express to us what's going on and, and and things of that nature. And then the last club meeting of the month is a little more relaxed. We usually have a club member do the presentation, so more of a get to know you instead of just a business fun meeting. Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more of a fun time and and a little more more friendly right um, so it's pretty structured robert rules kind of mm -hmm. um, and then we hold board meetings once a month too we have our officers meet once a month to, to conduct the business of the club okay i was i was wondering about that because yeah. there has to be some place where you have your agenda items yes. and all of that put together so yeah we decided to do the the last meeting of the month to be more of a relaxed get to know each other type of setting because we work. I mean, we're, we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. we, we have the, our job job, right. and then we're actually working Kitty Land when it's, when it's open. And, uh, and when it's not open, we're working. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's so much behind uh, updating the train or getting the snack shack ready for the week, um, cleaning the park, uh, all that. So we're working. And, right. and the goal is, I, I, I don't want to just work beside this guy because we're around each other so much. I want to, I want to get to know him. Mm -hmm. Some of my best friends are now friends because I'm part of Kiwanis and we share that common bond, but we've also gotten to know each other. So we, we just want to keep that. We want to be the whole package if right. we can. Right. Right. So, um, so we have you we have a brand new train and tracks train. at Kitty <laughs> brand Land. New track. That is so awesome. Is it the same? Does it seat the same it does. number of people? It does. It seats 24. Uh -huh. uh, the the engine itself is a little different. Uh, it's a, a huge upgrade. We've gone from gas to diesel. Uh, and it just it, it's smooth going down the track. We've actually raised the track. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't remember how many degrees, but uh, on the south end, uh, if you've ever ridden the train before, it was a little bit of a bog down. <laughs> you oh, kind of yeah, start yeah. to get that corner. It's like, uh -huh. oh, we're going to make yeah. it. Yeah, we are. 
And so uh, when we got ready to put the new track in, uh, which was just phenomenal, an outpouring, a huge outpouring from the community to help us do that. Uh, people donated uh, gravel and uh, lumber and just all kinds of things. Uh, we still had quite a bit of expense, but uh, when, when we talked about doing it, we decided that we needed to uh, <clears throat> to raise it so that it wasn't such a hard on a corner. Right. And if you broke the old track, oh my goodness, this one is just like butter. You just ah, you take off and sure. it's just smooth. Plus we were we got the train before we replaced the track. And initially we weren't looking at replacing the track. We thought the track was going to be okay. And we kept having a few issues with running the train. It just mm -hmm. would not seem to want to run. I don't know what you know what's the deal here do we have a bad train no we didn't have a bad train that the builder came down and he said look this you're down in the mud I mean you're down in the dirt yeah. all that stuff's just being drug up into into your brand new engine and he suggested build it like you would a, a real train track and mm -hmm. get it up off the ground and it did the trick wow. it was quite an investment but it did the trick it, yeah probably well worth it yeah. well worth yeah. it so you guys, about how many members do you have? Right now, uh, let's see, 35? 35, and I think we're actually welcoming four or five at our next meeting. Yep. Oh, so, very nice, yeah. very nice. And then you have friends, friends of, Kitty Land. of Kitty Land as well. And that's growing so fast that it's a number that's hard to keep track of. Okay, yeah. that's good news yeah. too. It is. And because that... I mean, honestly, people are like, I, look, I only have so much time. I already have a lot of things in the summer. But if you can spread out the, the hours amongst that's, that's so it. many people, that's the key. it makes it much more doable, much, much more something people would be like, more likely to commit to. Right. You know, so that's awesome. That is awesome right there. And, and then all of your other programs you guys just um are, are there like little committees like is there a christmas tree committee oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> okay. a chair for that, each you gotta have a committee, yeah, right? committee. Okay. Kitty, help me kitty land committee uh swim committee um goodness christmas, christmas tree. tree uh then we have youth services committees uh we have a membership committee that uh if you Want to become a member they'll reach out to you and have that conversation with you walk you through the process we have um, we have a meeting committee that gets our speakers to bring mm -hmm. them in and, and to engage with us um, i'm sure there's others right but, right but just that's the general idea yeah. so yeah so i think that our local group has got this organization thing kind of down to it <laughs> because uh well, let's see, you said Kitty Land has been around since 1955. 1955 is uh, the first ride that was put in was the uh, carousel. Okay. And actually had a soft top. I met, I was looking over some records the other day, and uh, they put that metal top on, on the carousel in 57 or 58. And I had the pleasure, a lady came through, she said, what do you think of that carousel? That's a beautiful carousel. I said, she said, my dad was the one design the top for that oh my so, goodness. so that that was in 55 and then the planes were added next uh, okay. in 59 and train came to us used in 63 1963 wow, wow. yeah so uh, of course the last one uh, in uh, late uh, 69 was the tilt the, tilt the one that the high schoolers just go nuts I, over that. I can't even watch it. So I cannot even look at it. I mean, I get, it makes me so, I just, I'm like, well, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to, uh, I, I never ride that, never. It would just be a terrible mistake. You mentioned planes that reminded me, um, we just had uh, uh, some donors step up and oh, yeah. so our planes have, uh, we just right before season had them uh, taken out and, uh, and stripped and painted and uh, they're going to put uh, fresh decals on uh, so they're getting they're in the middle of a facelift right now very good so, all right so when when's kitty land opening today's a, a perfect time for us to have this conversation Why? because we we did the last two weekends we opened friday and saturday night just kind of as a trial get us rolling and going but tonight the season actually kicks off we'll be open thursday friday 
Saturday and Sunday nights throughout the rest of the summer. Um, we'll be open from seven to nine. So very good. This is perfect timing. <laughs> How, what do you think about that? Um, so four nights a week, seven to nine. And, and don't forget our private parties. Private parties. Private parties. We're already booked out. We start booking in April. Uh, and I think we've already got 30, almost 30 parties booked. Wow. Yeah. And so those crazy. are like. Those run from May 1 uh, all the way through the end of September. Oh, so we, okay. we, we have the season a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. We stopped booking at the end of August, but you can basically anytime, I think we we just started the automation process. Thanks, Corey, for getting that <laughs> rolling going. And the timing of the guy's a, a genius, but Corey, our vice president, um, PC Wizards. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Okay. He, he got the whole thing automated. So, I mean, you, you just go to calendly.com forward slash uh, Kiwanis, mm -hmm. and it's like three or four steps. It's so easy. But I think the booking started at 9 a.m. and go all the way up to 9 p.m. And if we have an open a slot, you just fill it out. You can do a 30 minute party, an hour party, two hour party. Uh, it's $35 per ride per half an hour. Okay. So you can book three or you can book all four rides mm -hmm. sometimes one group won't want the planes mm -hmm. the little ones right. uh, sometimes you'll have a party where it's just all little ones and so they don't want the tilt to roll mm -hmm. but basically if you're going to do all four rides for an hour you're looking at about 280 dollars right. right and and i a lot of times we'll get multiple families in the block oh, they'll be yeah. like hey let's each pitch in 75 bucks mm -hmm. and we can go have our own party down at kitty land mm -hmm. Lots of, okay, so uh, what was that again? Callen, Calendly. Calendly.com, www.calendly.com forward slash Kiwanis. Okay, we're going to add that to the um, comments on this, uh, awesome. on the Facebook uh, page. And uh, Kiwanis, um, are, there, uh, are there other ways, like if people were interested in becoming a friend of Kiwanis or interest in your club go to the facebook page, facebook page. okay mm -hmm. all right very good simple duncan chisholm trail kiwanis duncan chisholm trail kiwanis okay mm -hmm. got that we'll add that to the comments as well um so uh guys thank you for serving our community the way you do i mean sincerely i i've lived here for over 30 years and my kids have been the beneficiaries of so many of the things that you've mentioned. And I, you know, I can just think back of experiences that we've had because of Kiwanis. And I know I'm not the only one who can say that. And so uh, I think our community really, probably as a whole would say thank you to you guys and the organization. And man, I, I'm just so excited about this Polar Express thing. <laughs> man, that's going to be so fun. But um, I mean, you guys just keep it up. You know, this is It's hard wonderful. not to. It's absolutely hard not to. The other day we were just working, 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 working. And you get a little bit tired sometimes. And there comes a, a little girl up to the fence and she's like, When's Kitty Land open? We said tonight. She started jumping up and down, and I mean, that's all it takes. Right. Their eyes light up. They're all excited. Yeah, it's you all just it got takes. a little yep. boost of energy yep. to finish mm -hmm. it up. So, will the planes be back soon? They're, are they're back. They're, oh, they are they back. Are, okay. They don't have all the decals on them. Oh, okay. But they've okay. been painted and they're up and they're running. Okay, so everything is We're going good to go. Everything's good to go. Tonight, yep. seven o'clock. Very, and you buy your tickets there. Do people need to have cash to buy their tickets? Cash, or we do take credit cards. Okay, cash or credit cards. That's always good to know also. Um, and then the the little shack, what would you call that? The snack shack? The snack shack, yeah. Things we're, are- We're, we're up at, well, at that, things are, we have snow cones available with water, Cokes, candy, and we're growing that list too. Um, that's another thing. You're going to have a whole new look uh, to the snack shack, and it's going to be neat. It's going to really stand out. And Very 
Man, Exciting this, things. no kidding. I love it. That's that is so awesome. Plus, I mean, when the the leadership class that built the fence, you know, added that, that was just like mm -hmm. a really great, you know, added from the the roadway. Just looking over there, and all these other things you guys keep doing. I mean, it, it's it's wonderful. It's a super great thing. One of the best things about summer in Duncan is Kitty Land and up uh, and swimming lessons. And uh, we're just, we're really thankful for you guys. I really appreciate you coming on Trail Talk today, Thank too. You. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, maybe you'll get a little interest or some customers out of this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe the, you guys are just very appreciative of Chris and Rudy now in a way you didn't even know before. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. So uh, whenever we sign off, we always say happy trails together. Okay. So you guys ready? Ready. All right. Happy, happy trails. trails.